David Lloyd George, 1st Earl Lloyd George of Dweevor, OM, PCE was a British liberal politician and statesman. As Chancellor of the Exchequer, Lloyd George was a key figure in the introduction of many reforms which laid the foundations of the modern welfare state. His most important role came as the highly energetic Prime Minister of the wartime coalition government. During and immediately after the First World War, he was a major player at the Paris Peace Conference of 1919 that reordered Europe after the defeat of Germany in the Great War. He arguably made a greater impact on British public life than any other 20th century leader, thanks to his pre-war introduction of Britain's social welfare system, his leadership in winning the war, his post-war role in reshaping Europe and his partitioning Ireland. He was the last Liberal to serve as Prime Minister. Parliamentary support for the coalition premiership was mostly from Conservatives rather than his own Liberals. The Liberal split led to the long-term decline of that party as a serious political force. Although he became leader of the Liberal Party in the late 1920s, he was unable to regain power, and by the 1930s he was a marginalised and widely mistrusted figure. Although many Prime Ministers have been barristers, Lloyd George is to date the only solicitor to have held that office. He is also so far the only British Prime Minister to have been Welsh and to have spoken English as a second language. He was voted the third greatest British Prime Minister of the 20th century in a poll of 139 academics organised by Mori, and in 2002 he was named among the 100 greatest Britons following a UK-wide vote. Upbringing and early life Lloyd George was born in Charlton on Medlock, near Manchester, to Welsh parents. He was brought up as a Welsh speaker and was to become the first Welsh politician to hold the office of Prime Minister. His father, William George, had been a teacher in both London and Liverpool. He also taught in the Hope Street Sunday schools, which were administered by the Unitarians, where he made the acquaintance of Unitarian minister Dr James Martineau. In March of the same year, on account of his failing health, William George returned with his family to his native Pembrokeshire. He took up farming but died in June 1864 of pneumonia, aged 44. His widow, Elizabeth George, sold the farm and moved with her children to her native Clannistumdway in Carnarfonshire, where she lived in Tynewith with her brother Richard Lloyd, who was a shoemaker, a minister, and a strong liberal. Lloyd George was educated at the local Anglican school Clannis Dumdway National School and later under tutors. Lloyd George's uncle was a towering influence on him, encouraging him to take up a career in law and enter politics. His uncle remained influential up until his death at age 83 in February 1917, by which time his nephew had become Prime Minister. He added his uncle's surname to become Lloyd George. His surname is usually given as Lloyd George, and sometimes as George. The influence of his childhood showed through in his entire career, as he attempted to aid the common man at the expense of what he liked to call the Dukes. However, his biographer John Grigg argued that Lloyd George's childhood was nowhere near as poverty-stricken as he liked to suggest and that a great deal of his self-confidence came from having been brought up by an uncle who enjoyed a position of influence and prestige in his small community. Brought up a devout evangelical, as a young man he suddenly lost his religious faith. Biographer Don Cregier says he became a diced and perhaps an agnostic. Though he remained a chapel-goer and connoisseur of good preaching all his life, he kept quiet about that, however, and was hailed as one of the foremost fighting leaders of a fanatical Welsh nonconformity. It was also during this period of his life that Lord George became first interested in the issue of land ownership. As a young man he read books by Thomas Spence, John Stuart Mill and Henry George, as well as pamphlets written by George Bernard Shaw and Sidney Webb of the Fabian Society on the issue of land ownership. By the age of 21, he had already read and taken notes on Henry George's progress and poverty. 
This strongly influenced Lloyd George's politics later in life through the People's Budget which heavily drew on the Georgist tax reform ideas. Article to a firm of solicitors in Porth Madog, Lloyd George was admitted in 1884 after taking honours in his final law examination and set up his own practice in the back parlour of his uncle's house in 1885. The practice flourished, and he established branch offices in surrounding towns, taking his brother William into partnership in 1887. By then he was politically active, having campaigned for the Liberal Party in the 1885 election, attracted by Joseph Chamberlain's unauthorized program of reforms. The election resulted firstly in a stalemate with neither the Liberals nor the Conservatives having a majority, the balance of power being held by the Irish Parliamentary Party. William Gladstone's announcement of a determination to bring about Irish home rule later led to Chamberlain leaving the Liberals to form the Liberal Unionists, uncertain of which wing to follow. Lord George carried a pro-Chamberlain resolution at the local Liberal club and travelled to Birmingham to attend the first meeting of Chamberlain's National Radical Union, but he had his dates wrong and arrived a week too early. In 1907, he was to say that he thought Chamberlain's plan for a federal solution correct in 1886 and still thought so, that he preferred the unauthorized program to the Whig-like platform of the official Liberal Party, and that, had Chamberlain proposed solutions to Welsh grievances such as land reform and disestablishment, he, together with most Welsh Liberals, would have followed Chamberlain. On 24 January 1888 he married Margaret Owen, the daughter of a well-to-do local farming family. Also in that year he and other young Welsh liberals founded a monthly paper at Gorn Ridden and won on appeal to the Divisional Court of Queen's bench the clan Frothen burial case. This established the right of nonconformists to be buried according to their own denominational rights in parish. Burial Grounds, a right given by the Burial Laws Amendment Act 1880 that had up to then been ignored by the Anglican clergy. It was this case which was hailed as a great victory throughout Wales, and his writings in Udgorn Ridded that led to his adoption as the Liberal candidate for Carnarvon Burroughs on 27 December 1888. In 1889 he became an alderman on the Carnarvonshire County Council which had been created by the Local Government Act 1888. At that time he appeared to be trying to create a separate Welsh National Party modelled on Parnell's Irish Parliamentary Party and worked towards the Union of the North and South Wales Liberal Federations. For the same county Lloyd George would also become a JP and Chairman of Quarter Sessions and DL in 1921. Member of Parliament, Lloyd George was returned as Liberal MP for Carnarvon Boroughs by a margin of 19 votes on 13 April 1890 at a by-election caused by the death of the former Conservative member. He sat with an informal grouping of Welsh Liberal members with a programme of disestablishing and disendowing the Church of England in Wales, temperance reform, and Welsh home rule. He would remain an MP until 1945, 55 years later, as backbench members of the House of Commons were not paid at that time. He supported himself and his growing family by continuing to practice as a solicitor, opening an office in London under the name of Lloyd George & Co., and continuing in partnership with William George in Cricketh. In 1897 he merged his growing London practice with that of Arthur Rees Roberts under the name of Lloyd George, Roberts & Co. He was soon speaking on liberal issues throughout England as well as Wales. During the next decade, Lloyd George campaigned in Parliament largely on Welsh issues and in particular for disestablishment and disendowment of the Church of England.
He wrote extensively for liberal papers such as the Manchester Guardian. When Gladstone retired in 1894 after the defeat of the Second Home Rule Bill, the Welsh Liberal members chose him to serve on a deputation to William Harcourt to press for specific assurances on Welsh issues, when those were not provided. They resolved to take independent action if the government did not bring a bill for disestablishment. When that was not forthcoming, he and three other Welsh Liberals refused the whip on 14 April 1894 but accepted Lord Rosebery's assurance and rejoined the official Liberals on 29 May. Thereafter, he devoted much time to setting up branches of Cymru FYDD, which, he said, would in time become a force like the Irish National Party. He abandoned this idea after being criticised in Welsh newspapers for bringing about the defeat of the Liberal Party in the 1895 election and when he gained national fame by his vehement opposition to the Second Boer War. He based his attack firstly on what were supposed to be the war aims, remedying the grievances of the Uchlanders and in particular the claim that they were wrongly denied the right to vote saying, I do not believe the war has any connection with the franchise. It is a question of 45% dividends, and that England was more in need of franchise reform than the Boer Republics. His second attack was on the cost of the war, which, he argued, prevented overdue social reform in England, such as old age pensions and workmen's cottages. As the war progressed, he moved his attack to its conduct by the generals, who, he said, were not providing for the sick or wounded soldiers and were starving Boer women and children in concentration camps. He reserved his major thrusts for Chamberlain, accusing him of war profiteering through the Chamberlain family company Kinnock Limited, of which Chamberlain's brother was chairman and which had won tenders to the war office though its prices were higher than some of its competitors. After speaking at a meeting in Chamberlain's political base at Birmingham, Lloyd George had to be smuggled out disguised as a policeman, as his life was in danger from the mob. At this time the Liberal Party was badly split as H. H. Asquith, B. Haldane and others were supporters of the war and formed the Liberal Imperial League. Lord George had been impressed by his journey to Canada in 1899, although sometimes wrongly supposed, both at the time and subsequently, to be a little Englander. He was not an opponent of the British Empire per se, but in a speech at Birkenhead stressed that it needed to be based on freedom, including for India, not racial arrogance. His attacks on the Government's Education Act 1902, which provided that county councils would fund church schools, helped reunite the Liberals. His successful amendment that the county need only fund those schools where the buildings were in good repair served to make the act of dead letter in Wales, where the counties were able to show that most Church of England schools were in poor repair. Having already gained national recognition for his anti-Boer war campaigns, his leadership of the attacks on the Education Act gave him a strong parliamentary reputation and marked him as a likely future cabinet member.